another review type question from Vector Calculus. Here you have a scalar field, <coughs> phi, defined in this way, sine of x, y, z. You're asked to do three things. Calculate the gradient or grad phi at a point P. Calculate the directional derivative at the point P in a particular direction. And also to calculate the equation of the tangent plane to this sort of level surface of phi at the point P. So we'll work through it step by step. You will use um, part I in part uh, triple I. So let's see if we can work through it. Now I can probably just fit the, the first um, calculation here. Now remember, um, the gradient is just the following. Okay, so you start with some scalar function, phi, and what the gradient does, it operates on it through this del operator, and you produce a vector, a vector field. Okay, so your answers for these kinds of questions, for the, when you want to calculate the gradient, should be a vector. Okay, so for this one, we've got this, so let's just... Write it out. Okay? And once we've calculated these derivatives, we want to evaluate them at the point P. So, let's take the partial derivative of the first component function with respect to x. So, a uh, sine's going to become a cosine y and z are imagined to be constants, so the y, z will come to the front and we'll get something like the following. Okay, similarly for the next one, it's the same except x and z are assumed to be constants, so the x, z will come to the front. And on the third one, very similar, differentiate with respect to z, holding x and y constant, so the x and y will come to the front and the sine will go to a cosine. Okay, so now all we need to do is evaluate that gradient field at our point P of interest. So by this vertical line and then a subscript P, I just mean the gradient evaluated at the point P. You can write it a few different ways. It's up to you. Okay, so let's go in here. Substitute x equals pi into here, y equals a half, and z equals a half. So the first component is going to be something like um, a quarter times cosine of pi on 4. Okay? The second uh, component is going to be x times z cosine or all of that. Well, it's going to be pi times a half times cosine of that times that times that, pi on 4. And the third one, very similar, it's x times y, which is going to be pi times a half, pi on 2, times cosine pi on 4. All right, now, cosine pi on 4, of course, is 1 on root 2. 
So you can simplify this a little bit. You'll get one on root two there, one on root two there, and one on root two there. And then you can take out a common factor and come up with the following. Okay? Okay, part two. Calculate the directional derivative of phi at the, at the point P in the direction of this vector. So to calculate the directional derivative, what we do is we use the gradient and we dot it with a unit vector in our direction of interest. Okay, so we've already calculated the gradient from part i. All we really have to do for this one is make this a unit vector and then dot the two vectors together. So let's do that. So the notation that I've used is this kind of notation for the directional derivative of phi in the direction of the vector u. Now, if this is our vector u up here, what we really want is a unit vector. Okay? So what we would like to do is make this a unit vector. So, how, so given some vector, how do we work on it so we get a, the, the same vector just with length 1? Well, we take it, calculate its length or its magnitude, and multiply the vector by 1 on its length. So By this, I mean the length or the magnitude of u. Okay, so for this one, how do you find the length? Well, you square the components, you add them, and you take the square root. So if I square this, I'll get 3. Square this, I'll get 4. Square the third one, I'll get 9. Now, down here, I'm going to get something like um, uh, root 16. Okay, now we're not interested in the general directional derivative. We actually wanted that at a certain point. So what we can do is use this. And this at a point is just the gradient at the point of interest dotted with this vector that we've just produced. Okay, so from part i, this is the gradient at our point P, so let's write that down. And let's dot it with this, the unit vector that we've just produced. So now we just need to do this dot product and we've, we're finished. Okay, well I can take the quarter and multiply it with this sort of coefficient over here. And then it'll just be this times this plus this times this plus this times this. Now, the first, the first two terms are going to give me that. We're going to get a minus 2 pi plus 3 pi. So it's just going to give me pi. Okay, now, remember, the directional derivative at a point gives you a slope. For a function of two variables, it's just the slope of a special tangent line that's intersected with a vertical plane and the, and, and the, um, the surface. 
Okay, so if you wanted to sort of interpret this answer, suppose you've got a surface and you calculate the directional derivative at a point in a particular direction. Our answer is positive. We would say that the surface is increasing in that direction at that point. Okay, because you could interpret this as a slope. The slope's positive. Now the last part of this question involves computing the equation of a tangent plane to the surface phi equals 1 on root 2 at our point of interest p. For this, again, we'll use the gradient at the point p. Okay, so we're going to use part i in part triple i. So we see, but I can probably squeeze this in down here. So it's the equation of the tangent plane to this level surface at the point P is just the following. Okay. Now by x, x with the tilde under it, I just mean <coughs> this sort of x, y, z. And by the p, I just mean the position vector of our point p. I could write op there if you wanted to, but I, I haven't chosen to do. I've chosen not to do that. Okay. So we've got this from part one. We know what p is. So this is just the following. Now this is just this vector here minus the components of P. So there are our components of P. So this will be x minus pi, y minus a half, z minus a half. Okay. Now we have this sort of coefficient out the front and everything's zero, so I can actually cover that up and form a, an equivalent equation. So let's just expand the dot product out. We can forget about that first part and then I'll form my equation. So that would then be the equation of your tangent plane. Now, you could simplify that if you wanted to, 